Brianna Scully talks about Earth Overshoot DA. No, this isn't an event that warrants celebration. To the contrary, the closer to the beginning of the year this day occurs, the more concerned we should be. Its timing in 2016 has environmental scientists worried about the consequences of how fast we re burning through the planet's natural resources. What is going on with the planet? Earth Overshoot Day marks the point in the year where we run out of our allocated supply of natural resources. The Global Footprint Network, Gergen, an organization partnered with the Worldwide Fund for Nature, produced the results. To calculate the date for Earth Overshoot Day, it crunched United Nations data on thousands of economic sectors such as fisheries, forestry, transport and energy production. The Gergen claimed we have just used up our allotted supply of regenerative natural resources for the year, earlier than ever before in history. This means that, from today onward, we will be in credit mode. Any and all of the natural resources we use, such as water and land, will be borrowed from next year's budget, contributing to the cycle. We continue to grow our ecological debt, said Pascal Canfin of Green Group Awuf, in response to the annual update, from Monday, August 8, we will be living on credit because in eight months we would have consumed the natural capital that our planet can renew in a year. According to previous figures, the trend of sliding into ecological debt has gradually worsened over the years. In the S, for example, we managed to stretch three quarters of our year's allocated supply across the whole day period, giving us an energy surplus of about three months. By 1987, we de run out by mid December, not too bad. By 2007, we de run out by the end of October, that was a little more concerning. As of today, August 9, we re officially in credit mode. It is the earliest time in the year that s ever happened. Judging by this, we re just a couple of months away from doubling the amount of the Earth's natural resources that have been allocated to us. What do the experts think? Drive Chris Reedy, an associate professor at the Institute for Sustainable Futures, said this new record is a legitimate cause for concern for the planet. There is a genuine issue here, in that we re overusing the Earth's resources and drawing down the national capital, he told News, Com. Oh. He explained that this is measured using an ecological footprint, in other words, a measurement of humanity's demand on nature. The measurement takes everything back to the amount of resources needed to supply our needs, so, for water it would be the catchment area required to supply the amount of water we need, for food it would be the farm area needed, or the forest area for greenhouse gases. What it does is say, let us take all the impact on demands we put on the planet in terms of food, water and resources, and turn all of that into a land area, and then compare that to the amount of land we actually have. He stressed that climate change is the biggest consequence of going into ecological debt mode, and warned we will be seeing more heat waves, bush fires, rising sea levels and impacts on food as a result. Where is Australia in all this? According to the Gergen report, Australia's total overall impact on the biosphere isn't too bad compared to other countries. China is the biggest offender, at 4, 8 billion global hectares. The United States is the second worst at 2, 6 billion global hectares. Australia and Iran tie in equal 16th place, at 210 million global hectares. But on a per capita basis, Australia's contribution to the problem is much more dire. Australia has one of the world's largest ecological footprints per capita, requiring 9, 3 global hectares per person. The only country worse than ours is Luxembourg. China came in at 52nd. To give that some perspective, according to the Gergen, if the world's population lived like Australia, we would need the resources of almost five and a half planet Earths to sustain ourselves. By that same model, the United States would need four, eight planet Earths. 
The UK would need two, nine, China would need two, and India would need about three quarters. In other words, we were one of the largest users of natural resources per person in the world. The Gergen report also points out that, as a singular country, we were still sustainable, in other words, we have more regenerative resources than we are using up. But their data trends suggest we can t keep doing this forever, over time, we reusing more and more of our resources than we can continue to sustain. Drive Reedy said the biggest problem was our reliance on fossil fuels, particularly coal-fired power stations, through which we contribute to some of the highest global greenhouse gas emissions per capita in the world. This is echoed in the report, which said greenhouse gas emissions make up 60% of humanity's demands on nature. A 2015 report by Next10, which ranked the economic energy performances of the world's 50 largest economies, placed Australia among the worst in the world, with the highest consumption of coal per capita. In terms of per capita emissions, Australia came fifth to last, only marginally better than Gulf nations like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. Our total energy consumption was also found to be higher than France, Italy and California, despite our having a smaller population. Drive Reedy said certain factors play into this, our standard of living is obviously very high, which directly converts into using more resources, he said. We re also very spread out, so transport plays a bigger part here. He also said more work needs to be done to ensure we transition towards renewable energy. Until then, the planet remains in debt. Protecting and fixing the environment is perhaps the most important use of technology we have today.